Now let's take a look at the game components. The complete list of components can be found in the player guide. First, you have one game board, 54 US cards, 54 PRC cards, 30 blue US air unit tokens, two blue US ground unit tokens, two blue US maritime unit tokens, 28 red PRC air unit tokens, two red PRC ground unit tokens, three red PRC maritime unit tokens, two blue and two red cylinders, 20 blue and 20 red cubes, and finally, four D4 four-sided die. Let's cover each of those items one by one. The game board consists of a game map with range bands and basing areas for the United States and the People's Republic of China, PRC. The U.S. basing area includes a contingency location container simulating agile combat employment ACE operations. Squadrons placed in the contingency location are considered geographically separated from all other squadrons in the contingency location. Additionally, each side has a standoff container where certain airborne assets can be employed. Each side also has a cyber track and an intel track. Ranges on the game board are an abstracted, unspecified distance. Ranges on the tokens refer to the range bands on the game board. Each side has a set of game cards made up of four types, mission, posture, squadron, and enabler. The campaign you select before the game should help guide your selection of mission and posture cards. Mission cards capture the objective of the campaign and tell how the player will score victory points. Each side has five different mission cards. Let's take a closer look at the attrition mission card. The mission is to destroy enemy units. Next is the posture card. Players select posture cards at the beginning of each ATO cycle. These cards shape the fight for that cycle. Players may not select the same posture card used during a previous ATO cycle except for the standard posture, which may always be selected. As you can see, the enabler card shows you how many enabler and squadron cards you have for that ATO cycle. Additionally, the card describes any restrictions or bonuses associated with that posture. Squadron cards are next, and they represent units that have been deployed into theater for the conflict. The number of squadrons that will participate in the ATO cycle is shown on the posture card. The cards have unit name, a picture of the type of equipment, unit patch, and a brief description. Each card also has a picture of counter spaces, with more on that later, and the number of assets in the squadron, as well as which band on the board they deploy to. Don't worry, this will all come together during the playthrough. Each squadron has a set of tokens to generate. We will cover these as we go through game setup. Now, let's take a look at the enabler cards. Enabler cards are used to deploy multi-domain operational effects into the battle space. These include maritime, land, space, cyber, special operations forces, and additional air effects. Next, we have the wooden cubes and cylinders. These are used to track actions and capabilities. We will show you how to use these markers during the gameplay. One last thing before we go into game setup, the dice. These are used to determine move outcomes. Basic moves use only one die. However, you can deploy effects or be subject to effects your opponent deploys that cause you to roll at an advantage or a disadvantage. When rolling at an advantage, you will select two dice and roll them and choose the higher of the two numbers. When rolling at a disadvantage, you will roll two dice and select the lower of the two numbers. 
You will see this as the game progresses. We've now covered the basics, let's proceed to gameplay.